Welcome back to the channel. This video is sponsored by ProShade Digital Solutions, the providers of the resin that helps us print these miniatures, and by Dark Lord Miniatures, who designed this gorgeous miniature about the paint. Let's get started. So when Dark Lord Miniatures contacted me about painting this miniature for the channel, I immediately thought of the Witch King of Angmar from Return of the King. And I wanted to focus on the moment when you see the Witch King release the army from Angmar and you see that beautiful sickly green energy coming off of the castle. So this is a piece from Reaper Miniatures from their Blackbone series. And I decided to use this as part of the base for the Witch King. So using an airbrush, we built up layers of turquoise to this beautiful sickly green to kind of mimic that color that we saw in the film. Once we completed that, we're going to glue it to this lovely piece of marble. Now, one of the benefits of living in Egypt is that marble is a readily available construction material. So sometimes when you're walking around, you find some construction sites that make mistakes with their marble, or the site is being taken down, so the marble they're using for wall panels or for flooring gets broken up and left on the side to be discarded. So sometimes you get these lovely pieces that are perfect to use for basing materials. Now that that's glued and set to the piece of marble, we're going to start laying down some extra pieces to make the base look more realistic. So we laid down some textured material from Games Workshop, and these little pebbles are rocks from my garden, and we're going to add a couple more pieces. But before we do that, we're going to add some Babel Black ink to um, the crevices, and you can see uh, there are some of the crevices you don't see black lining and it's just the same color as the original paint that I airbrushed onto the base. So we're going to set that in there to try to bring out the cracks and I'm going to put it over some of the areas where there's other debris and other markings uh, to bring out more texture in the base. We're going to let this sit and dry now, and while we do that, we're going to take these rocks that I got from my garden and that I primed, and we're going to use the same acrylic paints that I used for my airbrush to try to create the same look as the base that we just glued to the marble. Now building up from the turquoise, we're going to be using that same green mixed with the turquoise to build layers. And instead of painting it on, I'm going to be dabbing it on through uh, stippling uh, to try to keep the turquoise showing through. And then finally using just the green to highlight the edges to show wear and to show weathering. And then we're going to hit the base of each of these rocks with that same Babel Black ink to try to create more definition and shadow and just regular soot that would build up from traffic that goes around these stones. Now while those dry, we're gonna to be touching up a couple areas on the main base. There's a couple of skulls that are cracked and worn and a couple of pieces of stone that I would like to try to give a different contrast to. So I'm gonna to try to paint those uh, white as if it's bits of bone or maybe bits of other stone, just to give it a little bit more of a uh, variance of contrast so when people look at it, they don't see one particular color. Once 
once the skulls are painted, we're going to be playing with some contrast colors, playing with different browns like Agris Dunes and uh, Snakebite Leather. And we're going to be um, just kind of like building up the wear and the aging of the bone. And now while those dry, we're going to be dry brushing onto the painted texture uh, paint or the texture basing. The lighter green that I used for the highest light of the Witch King energy. And then we're going to go back over everything with a bit of a darker um, contrast paint. Now that the contrast paints are dry, we're going to be touching up the skulls with a little bit of an off-white uh, using a linen color from Reaper Miniatures and uh, touching it up with a little bit more of a skull white. And now here we're going to be adding that, like I said, the Bevel uh, Black ink to try to create more wear and weathering to the stones, especially at the bases. And we're going to let that dry and sit. And once it's all put together, this is what the core base is going to look like for the Witch King. Now I'm going to take a look and see how it looks uh, and where I want to position the Witch King onto the base. I'm thinking about painting only one side of the Witch King because it's more of a display piece than an actual gaming piece. So as you can see here, it's already been Xenophil highlighted, but I'm going to show you that process in a second. All right, so the miniature has been primed by using a thin gesso. And I'm going to be using this Instacolor uh, primer for gray to go over the entire miniature, uh, doing a dry brush Zenithal highlight. Uh, I'm not really worried about focusing on any particular light source, um, as I'm going to be doing this as mainly a piece that's at, lit at nighttime. And pretty much the base is going to be the color that will be reflected off of the armor. So we're going to do the entire uh, miniature in the Zenithal highlight, but I'm going to be mainly focusing on the front side of the Witch King. And then once that's done, we're going to be adding a little bit of a lighter gray to some of the high, higher raised edges of the weapons and the crown and uh, the raised areas of the armor on the horse. Now we're going to use Lead Belcher uh, Metallics to go over the armor paneling and the chainmail to start off as a darker shade of metallic and then we're going to build up with lighter shades. So now we're going to take a second to paint the uh, leather straps for the horse and the harness using a contrast color for uh, the Agros Dunes again. Um, we're going to try to keep it using as minimal amount of paints as possible. And we're going to be focusing mainly on just all of the leather, which is not much. It's only a few straps here and there. And uh, for the most part, especially the harness where uh, or not the harness, but the, the stirrups for the for the feet. Um, we're going to be definitely going over that with um, a green shade so that we might lose some of the aggro students' uh, contrast color. And then we're going to be painting the horse's ears and some of the horse's legs um, that can be visibly seen from the miniature once it's put onto the base. Now for the majority of the actual Witch King on the horseback, we're going to be using a type of black shade from Insta uh, Scale 75 uh, Insta Colors. So we're going to be, and what I like about this sh particular shade is that it has a little bit almost a cool darkness to it. It's not very warm, it's actually quite cool. It almost has a blue tinge to it. 
and I use this for my other miniatures I've painted uh, for the um, Nazgul and it comes out quite nice especially with a gray uh, Zenithal highlight it gives it a natural um, light source uh, when it comes to black cloth and now we're going to be using that same bevel black ink wash to go over the chainmail and the armor plating and uh, we're going to be trying to focus on pulling the ink into certain areas to give it more definition and especially on the weapon to try to give it more depth using a true metal metallic paint job we want to try to create enough shade to give it a realistic look and we're going to actually reflect some of the base color of that green into the armor and the weapon. Okay, now that we've finished the black wash, we're going to thin the lightest green that we used for the special effects of the base. And we're going to kind of stipple and also glaze uh, the thinned uh, uh, paint to certain areas of the armor to highlight the edges of the armor, to give a little bit of depth and reflection to the panels and to try to bring out a more realistic look and tie it to the base. Because many times you paint miniatures and the miniature is just attached to the base and you feel like it's two separate pieces. So sometimes when you do things like uh, work with metallics or look with, work with uh, uh, metals, you want to create a realistic look by reflecting um, whatever the miniature is painted as into the metal. For example, reflections in swords and spears, um, you know, bring out a little bit of depth from the ground reflected in the armor panels of the night. So this is what we're focusing on. And then also the idea is that, you know, when the Witch King leaves Angmar with his army, you know, you've got that green light and you actually see it reflected in much of the armor and in the Witch King himself when he flies over uh, his army. Um, and it just kind of, it doesn't saturate fully into the film, but you can definitely see hints of it. So I want to try to bring that realistic look because it'll tie it into the base and give you a really natural look when you go and move your eye from the base to the miniature. So it's a smoother transition um, to give it that realism. So once we're done with the green highlights, we have to go back over this again with an ink wash because we're going to lose definition, especially with the thin green paint, because it's going to seep into the chain mail. So you need that ink to bring back again the definition and the contrast between where the shadow is and where the actual reflections of light or reflections of color in the metallics. And we're also going to have to blend it back into the weapon because the stippling of that green is going to really stand out. So you have to blend it and create a smoother transition. Once that's done, we're going to be using a lighter shade of silver from the Vallejo line of um, airbrush metallics. And this is the, the lightest one, which is a pure silver.
Now, don't be disappointed if you have to play back and forth between ink washes, between the um, green highlights, and with the metallic uh, jar brushing. It's not gonna be a perfect process. You're gonna have to play with it over and over again until you get exactly what you want. So the process might take a little bit longer. Now, once that's all completed and you're happy with the outcome, now I'm going to use a regular brush and I'm gonna take that same light silver and I'm gonna highlight the edges of the armor and I'm gonna go after certain parts of the armor that are raised where I would like to see some kind of a light source coming from and to give it um, that definition of how some of the armor is never really perfect and it's not really always smooth. You have bumps, you have bevels, you have bends. So some areas will be more metallic, some areas will be more shadowy. So you have to play with that. And then in the edge, um, the edging on the weapon to create more definition and to give you that hard contrast line between the edge of the weapon where it's sharp and then where you have the shadows and then adding like little lines within it to create like scrapes and scratches as if it's been used and also just to highlight the crown a little bit more. And remember, we're keeping focus on one side. We're not gonna be really focusing a lot on the other side. And then I'm just gonna go back over with a finer brush with the green highlights to bring out that reflection. And like I, like I said, it's a balance, it's, it's a dance. You have to go back and forth between all the colors until you get that perfect blend. Sometimes that's why it takes a lot of painters hours to do these pieces that they put in competitions because it's a constant balance back and forth between getting that perfect contrast, that perfect um, um, scale from one color to another. You know, it, it's a lot of playing around. All right, so there you have it. We're just finishing up a few final touches and a few final details, and we're getting ready for the big reveal. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed painting this beautiful miniature. I want to thank our sponsors again, ProShape Digital Solutions, for the resin to print these beautiful miniatures. And I want to thank Dark Lord Miniatures for providing us with this STL to print this gorgeous mini. Their information is linked in our description for the video. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.